One thing we've learned through the years in the, my field, which is uh, really behavior change in health, is that focusing on an individual, giving that individual education, will rarely, if ever, improve the individual's health. That what you really need to consider are all the other factors that may be impacting health. And that's why the hierarchy of controls is really effective when you're thinking about workplace health. So the hierarchy overall is organized so that the most effective changes are changes to the workplace or the work environment. And they don't rely on individual behaviors. So at the top we have elimination followed by substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and at the very bottom we have personal protective equipment. When we go to a workplace, one of the things we want to do is to reduce hazards, and that involves identifying hazards, recognizing what they are, but then also thinking about ways to mitigate those hazards or to reduce exposure to them. So if noise is a hazard in your workplace, we can think about ways to eliminate that noise. Perhaps there's a particular piece of equipment or machinery that's causing this noise, and maybe it doesn't need to be used. Maybe substitute a less noisy piece of equipment or an operation that isn't as noisy. So for example, if we think about enclosed cabs and tractors or other construction equipment, substituting an enclosed cab piece of equipment will reduce the noise level versus an open cab position as well. Third tier is an engineering control. And so a good example of engineering control would be a ventilation system to remove dust in a work environment. So a wood shop or you know, an agricultural work environment uh, where dust is generated, you can remove those by using ventilation. The administrative tier, a, a good example of that, of that is, is like worker rotation. So say you have um, a task that you're doing somewhat repetitively in a work environment and um, the same person doing that task um, day after day, a certain area or anatomical region within the body can cause musculoskeletal strain. And so bringing other workers into that work environment so that you can distribute that exposure across more people um, is an administrative control. Another would be, say, um, you know, rest breaks. Um, you know, if you're working at the computer for an extended period of time, make sure you get up and move around. Um, uh, so you're not in the same position for um, extended periods. The final, um, kind of the least effective method of, of uh, control is what's considered uh, the use of personal protective equipment or PPE. So an example of that would be, say you're in a dusty environment, instead of installing a ventilation system, you say, okay, we're just gonna put like, a filtering face piece of respirator on the people who work in this environment. And in those examples, you're really relying on the effectiveness of the PPE and also the, the training that you provide the workers to use the PPE appropriately. And so, you know, a couple things have to happen for uh, PPE to work well. So if you're working in a noisy environment, one of the first things somebody may think of when they think about protecting the worker is to give them hearing uh, protection. And that's a solution, but it may not be the most effective solution. And it's not effective because it relies on the worker wearing the hearing protection and also wearing them properly. Um, a solution that eliminates the source of noise is much more effective in controlling the hazards and protecting our workers. If I want to prevent asthma or control asthma of say someone who has asthma who works in the workplace, then I have to do more than just educate the person on their asthma condition. As a hierarchy of control suggests, we really need to think about what are the exposures, what's causing that person's asthma. So we might want to think about the environment of the workplace and the air quality in that environment. We may need to think about the safety of that work site. Are there exposures to chemicals? And could we substitute those chemicals out for chemicals that may be less caustic or less impactful on the person's asthma? Are there sufficient ventilation and fans in the work site that will reduce exposures for employees? Are there policies in place such as smoking policies or rather anti-smoking policies? And if they are, are those policies enforced? And also, for policies, are the managers following those policies or setting a good example about what should be done? And or are employees provided with respirators and also the support and education to know how to properly use those respirators? So if you don't consider all of these factors, then you're, it's much less likely that you're really going to have a healthy workplace and also a healthy employee when it comes to asthma.